Hi everyone, it's Ren here. Hello. Um, in this video, I'm going to be. You know what? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this because this looks ridiculous. All right. Okay, so this should be better. <laughs> yeah, it's better. Sorry about this inconvenience moments. Uh, I have not imagined that the sun would suddenly be so powerful, but we are in the south of France, so that kind of thing happens. Um, in this video, I'm actually going to be talking about um, introverted intuition. And I'm going to be talking about introverted intuition, um, not from the perspective of like the technicalities of it uh, in the Jungian sense or in the Myers-Briggsian sense, uh, not that it is not important, it's obviously like fundamental, um, but the the literature on it is so well done, it's so much covered. There have been so many videos on YouTube that that have done it so well that like sometimes when I find myself watching those videos, I, I really got to tell myself what else can I bring to the table that has not already been said. I understand that sometimes people like to have different perspectives and I'm happy to contribute to it, and I have done that, but um, <clears throat> a friend was suggesting to me recently uh, that one thing that maybe hadn't been covered as much was just literally how the functions, like how one relates to their functions in, a, in, a, in an almost like experiential sense, like outside of the realm of like rationalizing them and trying to make sense of them and explaining them to people. In, in a language that is kind of technical and allows the creation of a system or rather follows the pattern of the system developed by Jung and Myers-Briggs, etc. And that person whose name is John made a very great point. And uh, this is me literally applying his very wise insight because he's a very wise INFJ. And yeah, so let's talk about introverted intuition. <laughs> What can we say? What can the what can the INFJ say about the use of introverted intuition? I warn you guys. This is what I, I want you to know the following. I have not prepared this video. I have spent zero seconds preparing this video, which is not true actually. I have prepared it via introverted intuition because I've been thinking about it since yesterday. And because I've been thinking about it since yesterday, I know that in the background, I've been doing some th synthesis of what I'm going to be talking about. What an amazing way to start talking about one of the most basic features of introverted intuition. As far as I'm concerned, again, I'm talking from the authority of my experience to uh, quote Jeff Goldblum in a recent interview, which I really recommend uh, with Pitchfork, over under, amazing interview. But he is an ENTP, so uh, we're not going to mention Jeff Goldblum anymore today. Um, introverted intuition, from my perspective, you know, what can I say about how I relate to it? You know, of course, I could make videos about extroverted feeling, about introverted thinking, which are functions that I very much feel like uh, are part of my makeup, extroverted sensing also although it is often appears as a challenge more than a, as a solution through my own uh, lack of, I guess, like exercising it enough or, or tending to it enough because I'm like always bathing in my intuition. But um, I guess like introverted intuition really deserves its own video. And it's good if the video is not too prepared and not too stream of consciousness and rather stream of consciousness because that's what NI does. And so not only can I provide some content on introverted intuition, but I can also show what it looks like just by talking without real preparation, you know. Um, so it's a, it's a funny function because since it is the dominant function of an INTJ and an INFJ, it is like what we are always in. There's not a moment in the day, not a moment, when we are not bathing in introverted intuition. Because it is my firm belief that the 
dominant function of any type is not a function that we just happen to use more than the others. No, it is like how we see the world, you know. I think I like to divide, and this is not original, by the way, but I like to see the, the perception of the world, how we make the world intelligible to us, how we relate to the world intelligibly as our dominance. And so this would be introverted intuition for an INFJ, um, an INTJ. Now, the, the auxiliary function is kind of how we operate, right? It's how we operate in the world. The tertiary function would be more <clears throat> sort of how we keep track of how we operate. And the extrovert sensing is like, uh, it's, it's connected to the, to the perception of the world. It's like, it, it's, it's, it's in a way, it is what provides some data on, for introverted intuition to be collected in the background and then processed internally. But again, I said, I don't want to be talking about it into technical fashion. Well, in my life, introverted intuition is, I think, when I'm healthy and when I'm not trying to overuse any other function instead, it's a function that looks a bit like this, you know, like you look at me and I seem like I'm a bit chill, I seem like, you know, I'm, I'm sort of lost in thoughts, but not like in a way which is gonna make me come up with like crazy tangents. Like I'm capable of making tangents, like any dominant people, extroverted intuitives, like ENFPs and ENTPs, I can do that, but it's not as, it's by no means as prevalent, it's by no means as much uh, an intrinsic part of how I relate to my NI. And that's because Introverted intuition is is a, is a is a is a perception of the of the environment, <clears throat> which is, if you like, it is directed internally. So I might be picturing my environment right now, just everything that's around me. And half an hour later, I'll just have some insight that is somehow like a, a synthesis of data that I perceived in the environment, more or less consciously, more or less unconsciously. And I do that for absolutely everything all the time. Anything that is in the external environment, I don't necessarily relate to it as such in a conscious way. Uh, I tend to just like take stock of like a bit of everything that's going on, not as a whole, not as a whole, not as a unity, never. I always like look at different things. And when I'm making a video, you will notice that I do the same thing. Often I find, and people have told me this, is that um, I have a tendency to what they say, what they call rambling in my videos. So you'll tend to notice, and I do the same, the exact same in my writing, by the way, the people who have been re reading me, they know that. Every time I start, you know, I write in series of 20 paragraphs every day, and, and I share that on the blog. Um, the first, 12 paragraphs or something. It's like I go into a lot of detail about observations about things and it seems to go in a bunch of different directions and maybe even look like any. A little bit like what I'm doing now and what I, what I do in all my videos. Like, I take a long time to start. I'm just like, you know, feeling my way around. I talk about different things, but you notice it starts with this like kind of wide panorama and it doesn't look like it's focused. Because I have a difficulty coming, like starting with the video and say, we're going to be talking about this and just go all the way towards it. Or rather to keep it as sort of my trajectory. I much prefer sort of having like the idea of where I want to go. And I, you know, it's like you have, you enter into a room and at the end of the room, there's like this statue and, and, and you, you know that you must pick up the statue. Like this is what you, um, this is what you need to pick up. Well, the thing is, as, as, as what I need to do is enter into the room so that I can see the statue, but the room is spacious and I need to go through the room. Well, the massive space is all the collection of various data that I pick up and I work my way toward the statue at the end. And once I pick it up, this is kind of like the distillation of my and I insight and that's the video finished. And what I suspect to be the case with, with an any user, an any dominant, for example, is that it's not at all what happens. I, what I suspect happens in the case of an NE user is that they know that there is a statue somewhere, they're going in a line, and then like they just imagine they're under, under like, you know, they're uh, what's the word, underground, and they just follow a lot of different paths in the earth. 
and they're capable of like going from one to a multiplicity and either like they all have their different insights that like sort of happen as a result or they eventually locate the statue because they'll have just it's almost like it's a massive it's 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 furrowing in the shape of a rake and it constantly expands so that the area is so um the area in which the furrows are being dug is so wide that inevitably the statue is going to be located on the on the ground so it's very different because in my case in the case of an introverted intuitive i already see the thing in the distance so the quest is not to the quest is not about like um if you if, if you like the way is not about sort of finding the right path by exploring a, a, a multitude of different possible paths it's about knowing how how to follow the path that you already see should you swim should you walk should you run should you be driving some kind of car or monster truck should be should you fly should you do a mix of these different things so it's more about okay the path is there i can see it but it has a weird pattern and i don't really know how it links via its pattern to the statue at the end i know that's my purpose and so as a result of that i keep to the path because i can see it and i know that the statue is at the end and but i i sort of I, I learn I learn to make myself feel at home in it, right? And this is partly conscious, and this is partly unconscious. When when it is partly conscious, is I think when you are aware that you're an NI user and you know how to trigger or to create the conditions for your NI to unconsciously do the work. So for example, when I want, you know, I wanted to make this video about introverted intuition and I had no idea how I would, what I would talk about. But since, since last night going to bed, I was like, okay, I'll activate this. So I said, my statue is introverted intuition. I more or less know what I want to talk about. I more or less know what I want my sort of, you know, I have a feeling, I don't, I cannot verbalize it, but I have a, a good feeling of what it is that I, I'm aiming for there. But. Let me just think about it and let it float in my mind. And it literally, there's this feeling of like floating, you know, and eventually it just zeroes in. So it, if you do nothing spe specific, the zeroing in might like will happen and we call it the aha moment because it looks like we just had this massive mystic inside, whereas in fact, it was our NI producing the unconscious synthesis of the collection of different disparate pieces of data that we had observed via SE. And that can happen tomorrow or in a year. And we think it's an aha moment, all the more if it's in a year, because then we'll have forgotten about the past, you know, the cause of, of it. Now, of course, if you engage in a piece of writing, say in philosophy like I'm doing, or if you make a video, you know that you kind of want to reach your aha moment a little bit quicker. Um, and maybe it's not really an aha moment, it's more like a, the synthetic moment, if you like, where the convergence reaches its conclusion and you just produce the form and the statue is in your hands and you're like, this is it. And uh, oftentimes all I got to do is start talking and let my NI just manifest itself through the various things I'm talking about. And you get the sense. It looks a bit like any, right? When I'm talking, it looks a bit like it. It's like I do completely and surely talk about things here and no preparation. And yet... If you think about it, instead of like deviating massively from my topic in this kind of like, um, I don't want to say scatterbrain because that's a pejorative term, but this kind of staccato fashion, um, I have more been like within broadly speaking my topic, but I've been like going like this, like that. And at the end, which is probably something like now, because it's been a long time, what I want to say is... The synthesis is this, you know, it's NI for me is like what I described earlier on about the feeling one way, one's way about and then seeing the statue. And once you have it, you have it kind of metaphorically in your hands and you know that you've located your answer. And this is kind of all that I wanted to say here, really. I didn't have any other uh, objective. I feel like I've just delivered all that I needed to de deliver. And so I have converged as much as I was hoping to. All right, let me know, guys, if you enjoy this uh, new approach that I'm toying with. 
See ya.